Thank you, Barbara. That was lovely. Welcome to everyone. Welcome to our Sunday service. Um, we're so delighted to have the Reverend, Sand Reverend Sandy Butler to speak with us this morning, and so delighted to have Barbara as our musician. Thank you both. Mother, Father, God, I support my loved ones with compassion and care on their journey through life. I share my wisdom as I teach, my experience as I advise, and my understanding as I console. I pray for those I love, knowing that the Christ within them is the light that guides them everywhere they go and in everything they do. I am grateful for my role in my loved one's lives, and I am grateful to be able to share this love with every sentient being in creation. And so it is. Amen. Thank you very much, Barbara. I would like to start this morning by first, because I'm just so delighted as always to be with you all to say, hi, what a vision, what an absolute vision you are. And um, you know, it's tantamount to perfect vision and I'm, I'm throwing that in the hopper here because that's one of Unity's themes. I think it's for this month. Um, and I have been very attuned to the difference between eyesight and vision, um, both on a human level, a spiritual level, and then just uh, what I call a sandy level, which kind of vacillates or wanders around between human and spirituality, um, just like you all do. 
And uh, Sandy has been busy trying to, I was excelling, telling Jan earlier, to kind of clean up a few things health-wise. Um, and I've been on a trek, as most of you know, because you've held me in prayer. And don't you know, I chose, with Spirit's guidance, I'm sure, um, to have cataract surgery in the month of July. And it ended up being part of August as well. Now, if that isn't um, something that would put home the issue front and center, up close and personal of eyesight, of vision, I don't know what else would. And I'm betting that many of you in the group here this morning have had um, eyesight problems or challenges, as we like to say in unity. And I certainly have worn glasses since I was a little kid. And I see there are glasses on many faces here, whether you did it as a kid or you got them later in life, they were to correct our eyesight or so that's what I was told. For me, it was at a time in my life very early on where the kids felt it was necessary to tease those of us that wore glasses. Consequently, my glasses got lost in my lunchbox. They got broken. You know, I would sit on them. They were like not something that I really wanted to be um, found on my person. As it turned out, I couldn't really see very well without the glasses. Hence, the glasses became more and more important. Now, fortunately, I had a grandmother who loved me dearly and she saw my struggle. And early on, she would take me by the hand most days when I was tripping. I, I had a lot of tripping going on with the new glasses. And she would say to me, look up, girl, look up. And I found that statement to be very helpful throughout life, never mind having to do with glasses. And she meant it as it related to tripping and looking down. Later, I found out that wasn't quite true. She believed in looking up. Her God rested up there. Her God was up in the heights of her, her being as far as her spirituality was concerned. So looking up was not only important so one wouldn't trip. Stay with me on the metaphor now. It was to be closer to her God. Now, I want to um, emphasize something uh, here in that there is a difference between vision and eyesight and seeing. And we all know, as Unity students, that difference. And I wanted to talk today, this morning, or speak with you, co-create with you this morning, about looking and viewing the vision that we are as divine through the eyes of the heart. And sometimes we need help opening the eyes of the heart, of our heart. What exactly does that mean? Well, let's take a minute and have a look at that. When we walk through life and we are doing our daily tasks, most of us um, are busy either looking for the glasses to correct the vision, cleaning glasses to correct the vision, and adjusting our eyesight so that we might be able to see things more clearly. Literally, we do that a lot. I didn't realize how much I did that until I got into this whole um, eye surgery correction business. I remember being told as a kid, gee, you got real bad vision. And that was the term that was used. And I kind of carried that forward, I think. So when I got to the doctor, for the cataract surgery, um, I was carrying that you've got real poor vision cloud with me. In spite of, and I'll be honest about this, all my teachings and hard work in my studies of new thought, of unity, of moving forward in life, I knew better. But there still was that um, fracture, if you will, in how I was viewing my world. And I wasn't viewing myself very well either. I certainly was not viewing my world or myself with the eyes of my heart. And here's how uh, kind of Emily Cady comes at things that I've always liked because she's right on it and she doesn't mince words. And she tells a story of 12 men who had an opportunity to look through a fence around a bunch of buildings that were being built. 
and there were openings, holes in the fence that these 12 men would be looking through. Now, whether or not you go along with this, I, I don't know. I know that I've looked through my share of holes in fences to see what was going on, you know? And you see in those holes, as, as uh, Emily tells the story in Lesson 12 of Lessons in Truth, the whole world. And one man, the first man would say, I see the entire world. I see everything. And the next man through another hole, a different size hole, would say, no, 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 you don't. I see the whole world. I see the world. I see the plants. I see the animals. I see everything. And so we would go down the line, man number three, four, five, on up to 12, and each one would declare that they saw the world through their own eyes, and their eyes were the eyes of God, the eyes that saw it all. And as it turned out, one man would invite the other one to come over and say, look through this and see, see what I see. Now, I'm, I'm using that as my way of leaning into the concept of vision and seeing from the heart. You know, some of us um, in this community, and I've taught it recently, but not with you all, uh, it's been years now, Eye of the Storm, which is an old volume that's been around Unity for a long time. It's still on the list of uh, required courses, and it talks about the winds of conflict. And one of the winds of conflict that we bring upon ourselves when we doubt ourselves or when we walk around with clouds of misperception is that, is misperception. We misperceive with sometimes an arrogance that says, much like the 12 men, oh, I see it all. I see it the way it is. And I'm going to tell you about how it is. And that comes to what we call setting it right as opposed to seeing it right. And I'm bringing that to our attention because we live in a world right now that is confusing, is chaotic. Um, it rattles the cage, not just once in a while, but almost every day, if not more than once every single day. And our perceptions get mixed up, get jumbled, or we allow anger to drive a misperception. And what happens when we misperceive a situation, when we see it the way we think it should be, and we're gonna tell everyone that's what we think, or when we see a person or an incident the way we think it should be, it drives separation. Separation from who we are and what we are and how we act. Do we act from our heart? Or are we acting purely on what we see through our own individualized filters? My friends, we have a way of looking, a way of visioning, and it is through the heart. And it's when the heart is aligned with the mind that we are able to reframe our thinking. When we tell misperception, be gone. I stand in truth, which is in Eye of the Storm, the antidote to misperception. It's principle, it's truth. It's knowing that with the eyes of God, with the vision that sees beyond appearances, with that kind of clarity and compassion and love, we are seeing with the eyes of God. Now I'm going to ask you today, how many of you look at yourself through the eyes of God? I asked that question of, I think it was my nephew, and he knew kind of what I was talking about. He's 12. And when I said to him, are you seeing through the eyes of God from your heart? And he looked at me and he said, well, I'd be a pretzel. And I got it. You know, I, I mean, I understood it from where he, where he was coming from, which for me, I thought was pretty good. You know, it's been a long time since I was 12, but I got it. I got it. And it was because I was standing ready to try and understand, to try and see what it was that he saw. Now, I haven't always been so ready. And I'm um, sad to say, uh, I was not ready the other day. You know, in order to have eyes from, of God from the heart, to have a vision, you must practice that. We all know that. We talk about it. I talk about it a lot. I try mightily to practice seeing with the eyes of God, seeing beyond an appearance of something 
to see the Christ in me and in other people, that's also a part of seeing with the eyes of God, to see a vision. Very often we stand in our own way of seeing vision, of seeing the Christ in us and in others. And I did it the other day. And uh, I was watching television. And I had been, I think, somewhat self-congratulating myself that I didn't watch television near as much as I used to. And that I seemed to have, as the Brits would say, sorted economic issues from political issues from COVID, you know, from fire. And it was for whatever reason, I saw that one of the fires out West had been started or reported to be started by a human, um, that it was a deliberate act. And I lost all sense of seeing through the eyes of my heart. I remember standing up from the chair and shouting at the television set. Now, I know I'm not alone in standing up from a chair and shouting at the television set, but when I caught myself in that awareness of, oh my, where are we seeing? Which little knot hole in the fence are we looking through? And oh my gosh, a rush to judgment. Now, here's the double-edged sword of judgment. I judged myself for my act of not seeing as in vision. And I judged the person I was seeing or looking at through that knot hole for what I thought was a, an egregious act. There are many egregious acts in our lifetimes that happen to us and through us, but it is how we look at those, how we view those acts, how we move through them or don't, how we maybe pile them on that that is the awareness of spirit. And that is the awareness that I'm talking about that takes practice. It's an awareness of self with a capital S. And that that self with a capital S is a driving force, is a life force. And my friends, we have a will and we can choose to honor and utilize and be that life force or we can choose to be a force for not good, for anger, for judgment. And we know this, and I bring all of this to you for your attention and for your intention. Lately, I've come to the idea that um, speaking and co-creating with groups is a chance for us to fertilize, if you will, where seeds need to be sown and seeds need to be nurtured in soil that we may already be familiar with. It's very easy for us in new thought, in unity. I do it. I, I do it. Well, I know that. Well, I've heard that. Well, my question then is, are you fertilizing it? Are you seeding it? Are you practicing it? And do you know it in your heart? And if you slip every once in a while, let's just kick out every once in a while. If we slip, if we make a mistake, are we judging ourselves or are we seeing it through the eyes of God as an opportunity to not only see the blessing, but to build on that seeing of the blessing? And some people will say, well, I don't see the blessing in some of the awful things that are going on right now in my world. Okay, the fact that you don't see the blessing or the fact that you even know there might be a blessing that you're not seeing is an opportunity, my friends. It is an opportunity to come up higher in consciousness and to increase your awareness about how you view your world. And are you viewing, ask yourself the question, are you viewing your world from the eyes of your heart? Are you viewing the world through the divine, in the divine, from the divine that you are? And this is not just a random statement or random question I'm asking. Do you view yourself and your world from your divinity? And it takes owning our divinity. Second principle, owning it. Do you own the fact that you have divinity? You are of the divine. Because I believe when we start there, 
we will continue to come back to center, back to home, in that we view all of our lives, all that's in our lives from our divinity. And that's what I call, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. That's what I call perfect vision. Now, once I sat down in the chair, did it change any of the facts, either about what was reported on the television set or about my reaction? No. Did it change or alter the truth of who I am? No. What it changed was me and how I perceived my truth, how I perceived my world. It's huge. It's huge. And it takes a couple of gulps of real good air and a lot of meditation to bring it on home, especially after you may have thought you had a slippery slope kind of slide going on. That's not new news to any one of you sitting out there. I'm asking you because what it also takes to see from eyes from the heart is forgiveness forgiveness, both of ourselves and others. And that's a whole other talk for another time, but I'm planting the seed now because it is the very kind of talk, conversation, if you will, that bears having again and again and again as we move through and navigate our spirituality and how we do view our world. So I just would like to say perfect vision is seeing with the eyes of God. It's seeing the Christ consciousness in all. And I'm not just talking about outside. I'm talking about inside as well. And it's going beyond the appearance, which we are in our humanity so sure we've seen it all. We've got all the facts and we don't need any help. Thank you very much. We've got this. No, we don't. I don't think so. On a regular giving basis. And that's what bears repeating. And that's why um, I really am grateful to be here to co-create with you all. You know what this is about. You know who you are about. The question is, is there alignment with your heart and with your mind? Are you ready to reframe are you ready to live from that place of Christ consciousness and be from that place consciousness? And then more importantly, maybe is if you are ready, are you willing? Are you willing to continue to get up and do it again when maybe you've stumbled? Are you? I don't know. That's my question today. And my challenge for the week is, when we all leave this morning, when the computers are quiet, and when we're on about our business of life as we know it, are you living with eyes of the heart? Are you looking at your life, yourself, and your world, and all that is in front of us right now through the eyes of Christ consciousness, beyond appearances? It's a question that bears repeating. I thank you very much for being with me this morning. And now let us take some time in meditation. I'm going to do something this morning in meditation, which I don't normally do. Um, and that is, I'm going to read something again from lesson 12 that Emily Cady wrote. And it's, um, it, it's a little powerful and forceful, maybe forceful is the word. Uh, and that's why I'm reading it. And I'm going to ask that for our meditation today, that we simply be with the words that I am going to read to you, ponder them and hear them and see them and feel them with the Christ consciousness that you are. And it has to do with separation which is many times why we don't always see the Christ in us. And yet it is also when we do see the Christ in us, we are challenged. So here's what Emily Cady says. I want to help you to see 
that there is no real wall of difference between any of us, except such as appear to you because of your circumscribed view. I want you to see if you do not already that every time you try to limit God's manifestation of himself in any person or through any person, including yourself, in order to make that manifestation conform to what you see as truth, you are only crying loudly, Ho, everyone, come and view my narrowness, my ignorance. I want to stimulate you to lose sight of all differences all side issues and lesser things, and seek but for one thing. That is the consciousness of the presence of an indwelling God in you and in your life. And believe me, she says, just as there is less separation between the spokes of a wheel, the nearer they get to the hub, so you will find that the nearer you both come to the perfect center, which is the Christ, the less difference there will be between you and your brother and sister. And we affirm this day, I am willing to see the good all around me in everyone I meet. I am willing to see my own part in blocking the light of spirit. I'm willing to let go of all that stands in love's way. Amen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.
Thank you so much, Reverend Sandy. And Barbara, thank you, because we truly never walk alone. Um, not ever. Um, so uh, let's all join in a closing prayer so that we can express our gratitude for the words that we've received and the music that we've heard this morning. Father, Mother, God, we are so grateful for the opportunity to come together even though virtually, and to hear inspiring words from Reverend Sandy and beautiful music from Barbara, inspiring music. We are grateful for the presence of each and every person here, and we honor each person viewing with our hearts, and so it is.